this is my new, well, new to me, industrial walking foot sewing machine. It's a Juki LU563, obviously very used. I got it a few weeks ago. Uh, my brother-in-law found it on a local uh, classifieds webpage and got it for a steal. Uh, it was a hundred bucks and that's ready to go. I, it is in good working order. Obviously the paint's a little worn, but I don't care. I wanted to get a walking foot because I have several projects in mind uh, that are gonna use heavier upholstery fabric. I wanna make a couch for our house, a couple of them actually, and I wanna do all the upholstery myself. I wanna reupholster the seats in my truck, and just, I've got a lot of ideas of things I want to make that require a sewing machine bigger than what I currently have. I'm not gonna go into my other sewing machines. We'll have a separate episode about that later. Uh, I've been trying to learn sewing for a couple of years now. I just kind of off and on, and I haven't really shown any of it before just because it's not very good yet, but it is something I wanna work into more of my projects. So with this particular machine, it was meant obviously to be used in an industrial setting big beefy walking foot and it can take up to a size I believe it's a 138 thread so really heavy duty uh, you can even do light leather work with this machine the thing that's tough about this is this machine came with a clutch motor which as far as I know like that's been the standard on industrial machines forever um, so what I'm gonna do is the clutch motor that's on this I'm going to replace it with a servo motor and the, the big advantage to the servo motor over the clutch motor for somebody like me is it allows you to really dial in the speed, uh, slow it way, way, way down to where you can be going just like, like actually being able to count your stitches, which on this, as I'll show, when you're going full board, there's no chance. And it's just more than I can control. I mean, if I had the time to really practice and learn it, maybe eventually I could develop the touch to do it. I just don't have time for that. Uh, clutch motors are, are fairly cheap. I'm sure there's really good ones you can get. The one I picked up was just one off Amazon. I think all in it was like 110 bucks. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you what it's like to try to sew with a clutch motor. And then I'm going to show you how to swap out that clutch motor for the servo motor. And then show you what I can do having the servo motor installed. So let's take a look at why, like the major reason why I want to replace the current clutch motor with the servo motor. So what I'm going to do first, I'm just going to take this scrap of uh, Carhartt fabric, duck cloth I guess, and I'm going to run a stitch along one edge. I'm going to try to run a stitch on one edge um, and you'll see very quickly, and you'll see very quickly why for somebody without a lot of practice, this is a, a tricky machine to run. Um, they're also noisier because the clutch motor just runs constantly. It's not engaged constantly, of course, but it does run constantly. So you can hear it spin up. I'm going to slowly push the pedal down until it engages, and I'm going to try to go as slow as I can. It's going to take a minute because I'm being extra careful to go as slow as I possibly can. Okay, so that didn't look terrible, but I'm usually not that good at getting it. Now I'm going to try it that stitch. See how fast that was? That's basically what I'm trying to avoid. So you can see, though, the machine does do a really nice stitch. I'm going to do another one just to the side of that. And this time, I'm going to let it go a little faster so you can see how fast this thing really is. See, that's nuts. So just with how fast it is, it's, it's really hard to get a nice back stitch. Um, and I, I like to be able to have like just two or three uh, stitches for the back stitch and it just, it, I can't do it. Um, if I, had a lot of years working in a, a professional shop doing this, like my mother-in-law has, that would be different, but I don't and I am unlikely to ever do it. So this is why I am switching to a clutch motor. It's quieter and you'll see the difference when we get this swapped out. 
Step number one, just like you would do with your table saw when you're swapping the blade, is going to be to unplug it from its power source. So we're going to unpack this motor. This is apparently the user manual. There's the bar to go from the foot pedal up to the motor and the motor itself. So we've got a few different components here. Uh, we've got the power source and the control box. And this one does have the option to add a light. I don't have a light for it yet, but that is probably the next thing I'm going to order. The needle positioner. This is to help it so that when you stop the machine, like you let off the pedal, that the needle always stops in the same orientation, whether that's all the way buried into the fabric or all the way up. Um, as I understand it, you can set it either way. And here, <laughs> here is the motor. Just a little, uh, little bitty guy, especially compared to that clutch motor. The next thing we need to do is tilt the machine back, and move the drive belt. I'm just going to leave that all the way back for now. So for the clutch motor, there's several things we need to do here. One is uh, we need to remove the bar from the pedal to the motor where it engages the clutch. We're going to need to remove the power switch, which you probably can't see, but it's up there. And then we need to unbolt the motor. And for this one, there's three carriage bolts. Um, they're probably not going to show really well from that angle, but there's one up here at the head of the machine, and then down here there are two more. So I've got to get in there, back those off, and then the whole thing should be able to come down. I'm going to start with the power switch, and I, like I said, I have already disconnected the power. It looks like the way this switch was put in, they screwed the box to the underside of the table because I don't see any fasteners anywhere else. So, just remove these screws real quick. Ish. <laughs> so there's nothing really quick about tooting these by hand. Okay. So I can't get the camera in the right place, but there are two hex head screws holding this in. Looks like that's also how they attach their ground. I'm going to try to reuse this belt if I can. Next I'm going to remove the bar that goes from the pedal to the clutch. And I'm going to keep the parts together and keep it at the same setting just in the off chance I ever have to put this back on. So to get the old motor out, there's these two bolts that I need to loosen. These are a 9 sixteenths. I need to drop those down a little bit. And then up there is a third one. If I can get these two loosened, and I'm probably gonna have to take that one all the way out, then this whole motor assembly should be able to just slide to the right and drop out. Also, these motors are really heavy, um, so if you're not confident that you can hold it up, it would probably be better to take the machine off of its pivot pins, set it to the side somewhere, and then tilt the table onto its back on the floor. All right, motor is out. There was one clip holding this power cord in place that I had to loosen. I couldn't get the camera in there, but just know, check your cord, both ends, to see if there's anything retaining this, which there probably will be. Make sure that's out of there too. Now we can start putting in the new motor. One thing that's nice is, at least on this one, I'm guessing this is some sort of industry standard, um, the hole pattern for the base is the same. So you could use the same mounting bolts that were already in the machine if you wanted. Um, this one came with new ones, so I'm just going to go ahead and swap them out. If you do want to use the new ones, make sure and check that you're getting enough clearance. If your tabletop was really thick, the bolts that come with it may not be long enough because they are shorter than the ones that were on this. All right, I've got the three bolts through. To make this a little easier, I'm going to go ahead and take 
two of the fender washers, two of the lock washers, and two of the nuts that came with this. And go ahead and get them started on these rear two. And the reason I'm doing that is this way I can slide the motor mount in. I'll probably have to push this bolt back up a little bit, but then I can just slide it into place and then attach this last one. And one thing to notice before you snug this down too tight, so the channels that this thing uses to mount, they're slotted. It's an open-ended slot. And there's a reason for that. And that is you need to be able to move, you need, you need to be able to move this whole setup left and right so that the pulley can be aligned with the pulley on the machine. If you look here, here's the very out of focus pulley for the motor, sorry, for the machine. And then down there through that slot, you can see the pulley for my motor. Now, in my case, I have the motor all the way to the right as far as it'll go. And I think this is gonna work. We'll get the belt in there and take a look before I snug everything down. To put the belt on, we need to take this belt cover off. And to do that, there's some Phillips screws, three of them, behind these three slots. So I'm gonna loosen those to get this off. And you don't have to take them all the way out. You'll notice right here, there's a bigger hole. We just need to loosen this enough to be able to rotate it for that hole to match up with the screw head and it should just pop right off. Okay, that cover is off. Uh, one other thing to point out here, my motor came with two different pulleys. It's got a 75 millimeter on there and it has a 50. I think I'm actually gonna swap these out and go for the 50. The reason being, uh, with the larger 75 millimeter one, the, the motor's still gonna spin the same speed but the speed of the machine is gonna be a little bit higher because for each rotation of this pulley, you're getting more movement of the belt. So to start out for now, I think I'm gonna go with the little guy and then down the road as I get better at it, maybe I'll swap back to the 75. To do that, there's just this bolt at the end. I'm gonna take that bolt off and there's some sort of lock washer behind there, pop that off and I should be able to slide this into the same keyway. Okay, on mine, that's a 19 millimeter. Now you are going to need an adjustable wrench for the back. Use a socket wrench for the nut. Be careful not to lose the key for the keyway over here. Put this back on. I'm going to go ahead and drop that key in its slot. Try to match up the pulley there. Get those guys back in place. Okay, that's pretty snug. And I think normally with these type of rubber bushings, you're just supposed to tighten it until they start to deform a little, and we're at that point, so. Calling that good. We're going to fish this belt through again. Hmm. Well, that's not exactly the fit I was going for. So this isn't going to work. You can adjust the tension by loosening this bolt and then just pivoting the motor around that to tighten and loosen not gonna work with the current belt that I have because if I go back too far, then the belt rubs against the underside of the table where it comes through the hole. And if I bring it forward enough for it not to touch, then there's just way too much slack left. So we're gonna ignore the belt for now. I guess I, I could go back to the 75 millimeter pulley and it would maybe work. But instead, I'm just gonna leave that alone for now. And okay, next, we're gonna connect the pedal to the speed control, or I'm not actually sure what that piece is called. 
But to do that, I think I'm going to connect it at the top first. So I've taken the lock washer and nut off of that end. And I'll show you this in just a minute. You do have to adjust this nut here to make sure there's enough thread to go all the way through the lever on that speed control and put your washer and nut on. And then we need to do the same thing here at the bottom. So that guy is a 12 millimeter. And what I've done is just put the pedal all the way up so that the lever, the speed control thing is all the way in the off position. You can kind of put that wherever you want, I guess, within reason. Actually, I might lower that just a little bit. So to give you a better idea of what's going on, this rod attaches down here and up here with this all the way up this is in the off position push that down that's full throttle you could loosen this bolt and move this up and down to adjust where you want the pedal to be um, for on or off i just i figured it would be easiest if i had this all the way down so that there's a stop on the bottom as opposed to just the stop there at the top so i don't put too much stress or anything on that so this is what i'm going to try for now so the power source is going to be pretty similar to how the motor mounted in that there's three screws that are going to hold it in place. I'm going to figure out where I want that to go and then get that screwed in. So I lucked out a little bit in that one of the holes from the old power box was already in a good spot. So I am going to try to use that. sources in. So now we're going to connect all these wires and then we'll plug in the power. I do need to do some cable management under here, get some zip ties going or something. But for now, I think this is fine. Nothing is getting in the way of the belt. We can at least test it out and make sure everything actually works. Okay. Let's power it up. Power on. I think this button is for speed. This is for adjusting the needle positioner. Positioner is going to wait for another day. So let's see how this does. These are the test stitches I did with the old motor. So now, let's see what happens. I'm going to see if I can lower the speed. It's definitely slower. I would still like it to be a little slower than this. I think I've got it figured out. So when it was going really quick at first, that's because it was on the default settings from the factory. And looking through the manual, which doesn't help for getting everything connected, but is actually pretty helpful for the controller. You have a default startup and stop speed, and a max speed, and an acceleration time. So I went into the controls following those instructions, and I've lowered the startup speed down to 100, I think, which is the slowest. And the max speed, I think I set it at, I don't remember, like a thousand, let's see. So currently I have the max speed set at 500. The default was 3000. Okay, so with that done, let's just take a look at where we're at right now. So I can be pushing down this. All right, so there we go. That's as slow as I can go, which that I can control, I think. And then let's 
take a look at full speed with what I've got it at now, which I think my full speed, my max speed is set to 500 stitches per minute. So I may slow that down until I get a little better, but that is manageable. And at that speed, keep in mind, this is with the 75 millimeter spindle, uh, sorry, um, pulley. When I get a shorter belt, I can swap that out with the 50 millimeter, and it'll be even slower. Since I filmed those practice runs with the 75 millimeter pulley, I went to the local O'Reilly, got a shorter belt, and now I've got the 50 millimeter on here. So we're going to take a look and see how this does. I have also found uh, through another video that Amazon sells an even smaller pulley, a 45 millimeter, that I'm going to get and try, but it's not here yet. So we're going to just try the 50 millimeter with the shorter belt now. We will try this out on a little bit of waxed canvas. like that. So that is slower. I wouldn't say it's a, a ton slower than what we were getting with a 75 millimeter, but it is slower. I think I can work with that. I have looked into other ways to slow this down. Uh, there is a thing called a speed reducer, which is just a set of two pulleys, a small one and a big one. Um, kind of expensive though. So if I end up going that route, I'm just gonna cobble together my own. But for now, I think this will work. So that is my industrial walking foot sewing machine. Nothing too fancy, but it's just what I need for several projects that I have coming up. Uh, so expect to see more sewing related content on here. Uh, it might be time to change the channel name because with all the welding and now sewing, sawdust as life doesn't really make sense anymore. But that's a topic for another day. Anyway. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more of the stuff I do on my shop, please subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time.